Welcome back to Discovery Lab Online. Now that we're all gearing up for summer, everyone is gonna start hosting their favorite summer event, the barbecue. Memorial Day, Juneteenth, the 4th of July, and Labor Day are all usually celebrated with some form of large community barbecue. But what exactly is a barbecue? Why is Texas barbecue so distinct? And how did it become the favorite food of summer celebrations throughout the United States? In this video, we're gonna answer all of those questions and we're also gonna recreate an 120 year old recipe for barbecue sauce that you can try out at your family's next big event. But let's start with some history. And that begins with the history of the word itself. The origin of the word barbecue is hotly debated, but most historians believe that it originated from the Taino word barbacot or barbecue, which refers to the wooden framework the Taino people of the Caribbean used to roast fish and game. Spanish colonizers of the 1500s observed this technique and referred to it in its phonetic translation as barbacoa, which refers to a technique of slow cooking over an open fire or cooked in a hole dug in the ground covered with leaves. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, the anglicized version of the word barbecue first appeared in 1661 and originally meant to refer to any sort of wooden framework, whether it was used for cooking or some other purpose. But a century later, the word had been narrowed down to refer specifically to a cooking technique. The barbacoa that the Spanish brought with them when they colonized modern day Texas and Mexico fused with existing culinary traditions of the Caddo people who had perfected the technique of cooking venison and other game over a wood fire. During the 1820s and 1830s, Southern slaveholders from the Old South began settling cotton plantations in Texas, and African Americans who were enslaved by these plantation owners introduced the Southern version of barbecue to Texas. This involved cooking meat over a pit that was usually about three feet deep, 25 feet long, and three feet across, and they'd cook this meat for 24 hours, which made African Americans the first pit masters in Texas, just as they had been in the rest of the South. Between the 1850s and 1890s, a new wave of German and Czech immigrants added their own culinary influences to Texas barbecue. They opened an array of new butcher shops where they would sell their smoked meats to farmhands and travelers on pieces of butcher paper, sometimes served with sauerkraut, and other times just served with a simple side of crackers and pickles. Before the Civil War, Texas barbecue was dominated by veal, mutton, goat, and pork. But afterwards, the cattle industry boomed and beef became the major staple of Texas barbecue with sliced beef brisket being the signature dish. But even though Texas barbecue is known for its beef tradition, it still regularly features barbecue sausage and goat, which nods to the state's German and Mexican heritage. Another major point of controversy is over the history of the sauce. Today, some Texans argue that sauce is irrelevant to barbecue, as long as the meat's cooked right. And they also argue that Texas barbecue should forgo sauce altogether. But it didn't always used to be that way. And today I'm gonna to show you a recipe for barbecue sauce from Laredo, Texas, that was published in 1899. If you wanna follow along with the recipe at home, check out the description of the video. All of the ingredients and steps will be listed there. We're gonna start by adding 12 ounces of ketchup, a half a cup of cider vinegar, a half cup of water, one cup of vegetable oil, a half a cup of butter, a third of a cup Worcestershire sauce, the juice of one large lemon, a quarter cup of sugar, one large red onion finely chopped, four teaspoons of liquid smoke, four cloves garlic minced, two bay leaves, a half a teaspoon of dry mustard with a quarter teaspoon of ground red pepper, and in the words of the author, enough Tabasco to tickle your tongue. We're then going to boil all ingredients for 15 minutes. Then after that's done, we are going to strain and keep it warm. And then the recipe recommends that you use it to baste uh, charcoal grilled chicken, beef, or pork. If you do get the chance to try out this recipe at home, please let us know in the comments. I would love to hear how it went. But we're not quite done with the history yet. And that's because barbecue is more than just a dish, it's also an event. 
In Texas, barbecues have historically been important cultural events for family reunions and even political gatherings. In 1860, Sam Houston spoke at the Great American Barbecue, a major political rally. And in 1941, Governor Lee O'Daniel threw a free barbecue at the governor's mansion to celebrate his inauguration, where 20,000 Texans showed up to eat 6,000 pounds of barbecued beef. And in the 1960s, President Lyndon B. Johnson threw many barbecues for world leaders at his ranch in Stonewall, Texas. Barbecue also acted as an interesting ideological tool during the Cold War between the U.S. and the Soviet Union, and it helped increase the food's popularity during the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. Some historians argue that the overt display of Americans eating large amounts of meat was a propaganda tool intended to highlight that capitalism could give people the freedom to own homes with backyards, leisure time to grill outside, and the money to buy any food they desired. Today, barbecues remain an important element of Texas culture and also of American culture as a whole. Its complicated history is a mixture of African-American, Native American, Caribbean, German, Czech, Spanish, Mexican, and English food traditions. And the methods and ingredients used are constantly changing to create new flavors and bring Texans together in new ways. Do you have a favorite local barbecue joint? Please give them a shout out in the comments below. And if you enjoy our content, let us know by leaving a like on this video, subscribing to our channel. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, please let us know in the comments or send them to questions at fwmsh.org. Thanks for watching.